The common ion effect. If you have a, an equilibrium and you put in one of the chemicals, you're going to have, according to Le Chatelier, a shift in the equilibrium. So if you're putting in an ion that already exists in there, if you're adding it, you're going to cause that shift and then you have to deal with it. I mean, you can read this and it's like, okay, I gotta think really hard when I read something like this. If the concentration of one ion produced in the ionization of a weak electrolyte is increased, the weak electrolyte ionizes less. What? What did they just say? Let me ask what happened to number one. Oh, there it is. Okay, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> number one, here is an example. They want to know what the pH of a solution is when we're taking this formic acid and they're telling you what the molarity is. And here is the formate ion. They're telling you what its molarity is. They're telling you what Ka is and they've added something interesting there. But hey, I mean, for, mo for the moment, I shall just ignore that because I'm just gonna go ahead and do what I usually do. I'm going to do a rice table. The first thing we're going to do is the reaction. We have the formic acid, and it is interacting with the water, forming an equilibrium with hydronium ions, and you'll notice I'm writing this the wrong way. I shouldn't write it that way. Why shouldn't I write it that way? But that's, that's the H that it loses. Remember our discussion about the COOH group? Okay, let me not write it there. I'm gonna put it here. This one was bound to the carbon and didn't get loose. The one that got loose was bound to an oxygen. Okay, that's, that's just a little review, right? So there it is. So initial, what is initial? Well, they told us what the concentration was of this. It was 10 to the negative two, right? And they told us what the concentration was of this. That's the break. This is plain water, don't have to worry about it. So initially, I'm wondering how this is all going to be set up, right? So in the change, that cannot remain as zero. So I have to make some of it to make sure this all makes work, makes sense. And then for the equilibrium, we see that things have gotten particularly nasty. Well, we have this minus X, this is just X, but oh my goodness, this, oh. This is worse than usual. Now it's still just going to end up being your um, quadratic equation because you're going to do your usual. For this, the KEQ is the same as the KA because it's an acid. So we'll take the X times the X plus 7.8 times 10 to the negative third because there's your products over your reactant, oh, my goodness. And we'll set it equal to the Ka that we were given. And then it will be time to solve it. And when we put it into our quadratic form, we're gonna find out we get more annoyance than usual here. And this is where we realize the limitations of scientific notation because I can't just add these. I have to switch them back before I add them so that I get it right. So I end up with, once I round because of my sig figs, I have to do some rounding too. And then it's time to use our quadratic equation and we're gonna end up 
with the usual. Since this ended up being negative, I'll be able to just use the positive answer to the radical. and minus it's plus and then the four and at least that's still just a one there so this is 2a is just a two and when I get done I get 5.2 times 10 to the negative fourth molar x was the hydronium ion concentration And since they asked for the pH, I'll take minus the log of this. And I will get a pH of 3.27. And this was particularly awful. Why was it so bad? Well, it was so bad because we ended up with X being altered in two different places. Well, fortunately, as it turns out, there are people who also thought it was awful. And those people came up with a way of dealing with it. And it's going to involve this other number that we didn't use in this problem, the way that we did it anyway. The pKa, oh, well, that is our this, it's done the same way as usual. When we had the definition of pH, it was minus the log of the number. Well, for this, the pKa is minus the log of the Ka. And you can see, okay, three, okay, 3.75. That sounds like a good number. Now, what is that? And why do we care? Well, like I say, Henderson and Hasselbach didn't enjoy doing rice tables any more than you do. So they came up with an equation to use instead. And they can use it to calculate the pH of a solution in which the concentrations of acid and conjugate base are known. That is exactly what we had in this problem. We had the acid and they gave us the concentration and the conjugate base and they gave us the concentration. So the Henderson-Hasselbach formula is a wonderful thing and we should try using it. So for number two, we're just gonna do the same thing as number one, but instead we'll use the Henderson-Hasselbach equation. So that pH, that's what I, I'm looking for, is the pKa, oh, well we already know that because it was given to us in the problem, and then it says, the logarithm, you'll notice it's written out log, so it's base 10, of whatever the base concentration is over the acid concentration. And you'll notice I am adding these parentheses just to make it clear. You should do this first before you take the logarithm. Because I've had people where they took the logarithm of the base and then they divided by the concentration of the acid and that doesn't work. So I've added these to make it perfectly clear that you're doing this before you take the logarithm. Well, good. We already know that this is 3.75 because it was given to us in the problem. And we know what the concentrations of the base and the acid are. The big problem here is just to remember which is which. You have to identify which is the base and which is the acid. This ends up being 3.75 plus the logarithm of 0.312, if you do this first, okay? Which gives you 3.75 plus, oh, excuse me, it's not a plus, it's under the number one, it's a negative. Okay, never mind. 0.51, and when you do that, you're going to get 3.24. Now, that is slightly different than what we got in the previous problem, but it is in the last significant figure, so it's perfectly acceptable. Yeah. Differs 
only in last sig fig. And that is the purpose of the last sig fig. That's the one where you're always giving your best guess anyway. So as you can see, this took a lot less paper, right? So this is going to become your new best friend in this chapter.